Hi guys, uh, this is Pete, N6QW, and uh, this video covers uh, the subject of double balance mixers and how to build a double balance mixer. And of course, uh, this is a part of our project, Let's Build Something. Um, there is a currently a YouTube video about part one where we employ a double balance mixer along with a small RF amplifier and a uh, audio amplifier and, a, and an LO device, uh, this case being a VFO, and produce a, uh, a direct conversion receiver. Um, the heart uh, of this uh, direct conversion receiver is the double balance mixer. And um, there's a little bit uh, uh, of a mystery about double balance mixers and, and what do they do, uh, how do they do it, and how do you make one? So uh, the subject of this uh, video is to uh, discuss a little bit about double balance mixers and uh, also to show you how to build one so that uh, you can replicate uh, the results of our part one, let's build something. Double balance mixers should be thought of uh, as, a, as a device that, that really is involved with frequency conversion. Uh, the ability of this device using a very small number of components, uh, including four diodes and two uh, ferrite core transformers uh, is a marvelous, uh, m marvelous uh, device uh, for providing uh, uh, the ability to convert frequencies. Uh, for instance, um, you know, what you can do is uh, take an incoming signal off the air, uh, supply a local oscillator signal, and uh, the output of this uh, double balance mixer is a, uh, is a resultant third frequency. Uh, in the case of the direct conversion, uh, if you had a uh, on-the-air signal at 7.20 megahertz and you supplied a, uh, a local oscillator signal of uh, 7.201, uh, essentially the double balance mixer produces the sum and difference frequencies. So at the output we'd see 14.201, which is the sum, and 1 kilohertz, which is the difference. And of course we'd be interested in the 1 kilohertz because we can feed that into an audio amplifier. So um, double balance mixers are, are used in many places uh, throughout a, a typical receiver or transceiver. Uh, the frequency mixing process, for instance, if we took that uh, same 7 uh, megahertz incoming signal and we supplied a local oscillator signal, say at 16 megahertz, uh, the difference frequency uh, would be 9 megahertz. And if we had a 9 megahertz, 9 megahertz IF, uh, that would uh, go right through that system and uh, we'd be able to... Uh, feed that into a, a product detector and from the product detector into audio producing a, 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 a single sideband signal. So uh, it can be used for frequency conversion at, at RF levels and also uh, frequency conversion uh, at, in the audio range. Uh, for instance, uh, you can take that same double balance mixer which is essentially a bilateral device and you can, uh, if you're feeding a um, product detector uh, uh, you arrange as a product detector and feed, feeding a BFO into there uh, and then follow that with an audio amplifier you'd, you'd have recovered audio. But however if you instead of that same port where you would take the audio output you would put a microphone input uh, and supply uh, uh, audio range frequencies into the balance mixer uh, you now have, have a, uh, a balance modulator. So uh, kind of marvelous devices so uh, lots of applications. Uh, later on in the video, we're going to talk a little bit about the actual physical construction and just understand that uh, what makes a successful homebrew double balance mixer is dependent uh, entirely on uh, the two components, the ferret core transformer, and which are typically tray filler wound, and how, what, what a good job you do or don't do in constructing those transformers is, is largely going to be a measure of how well it performs otherwise. So winding uh, the tri-filler transformers, you need uh, tight windings and you need the phasing to be correct. So um, yeah, that is very important. Now on the diode end, uh, the diodes are configured in what's called a ring, uh, four diodes, and uh, there are various uh, diodes that are, are utilized in a diode ring. Uh, at, at the very top notch performance of the spectrum are Schottky barrier diodes which are a little more expensive than uh, some of the most common diodes we see like the 1N4148s or 1N914s. You can build a successful double balance mixer uh, 
uh, with the 1N914s or the 1N4148s or 1N4152s or 1N3070s. But uh, the real top-notch performance uh, really comes from the Schottky Barrier Diodes. Now, they're, they're the, the device that we're going to discuss is called a, a passive mixer because it doesn't produce a, any a gain uh, through, through the process, through the mixing process. Matter of fact, it's a gain loss device. You may see upwards of about 7 dB loss in a conversion, what they call a conversion loss in the double balance mixer. Um, the, the levels of the signals that need to be supplied, uh, typically the off the air signals are pretty small in, uh, in terms of a peak to peak voltage, but the uh, local oscillator signal has to be significantly larger, significantly larger than what you have coming off the air. You'll see ratings for double balance mixers that uh, are typically like 4 dB, dBm devices, that means with re reference to 1 milliwatt, or 7 dBm devices, and essentially that what that means is how much drive level you're going to need in the local oscillator. A 4 dM, a dBm device such as a commercial package for mini circuits, the ADE1L, uh, a 4 dBm means you have to supply 1 volt peak to peak uh, to have a 4 dBm signal. Uh, for a 7 dBm device, such as the Tough One or SBL One, uh, the, the signal levels required of that are 1.414 volts peak to peak is a 7 dBm device. Um, I would suggest you do a little internet search and you can look at a conversion table from uh, peak to peak volts uh, to dBm. So, and uh, you can see that those numbers, uh, 4 dBm is 1 volt peak to peak and 7 dBm is 1.414 uh, volts dBm. Uh, uh, peak to peak for uh, 7 dBm. So uh, we need to supply a sufficient signal. Now the resulting output uh, of the mixing process is far less uh, than the signal levels that uh, you're putting into it. So that's where the conversion loss comes in into play. And that's why um, tip, there may be in many instances where these are employed as you have what's called a post mixer amplifier to add back in the gain that you would lose. Now. The difference between a uh, passive device and an active device, uh, there are many vacuum tube circuits that are mixer stages. Uh, matter of fact, there was a whole series of tubes developed uh, specifically for that, the 7360, uh, the 6AR8, the 6HJ8. These were all uh, specialized tubes that could be used as double balanced mixers. And uh, the, the desirability of, of the tube, in this case, it is a gain device. It's an active device, so you do have gain coming out of the conversion process. However, it adds significantly to the noise. So if you're looking for a no low noise application, uh, the uh, solid state version of the double balance mixer is uh, by and far probably a better choice. Uh, we'll, we'll talk a little bit about uh, materials, uh, core materials. Uh, most of the projects that you f see floating around either use the type 43 material or type 61 material for the ferrite cores. And it all kind of depends on uh, where, uh, what, what signal levels you're converting. For instance, the Type 43 are, are used in wideband transformers, uh, typically up to about 50 megahertz, and, and it has some desirable features over the Type 61 material. The Type 61 material are used for wideband transformers up to about 200 megahertz. So if you were going to do uh, a conversion a double balance mixer in the VHF range, you probably want a Type 61 core in there. For most of the stuff used in the HF spectrum uh, as, a, as a frequency mixer, uh, you'd probably want to use the 43. Now, the big difference is, is what's called the AL value, and this is a, a numeric number uh, that's associated with each of these values. And uh, for instance, the AL value for the type 43 is a number called 420 and for the um, uh, type uh, 61 is 55. When you do the calculation on a number of turns, uh, if you wanted to build a 1 millihenry choke uh, using a ferrite core, uh, you would find that you'd need maybe about uh, 45 turns uh, for, for the type 43 and you'd need about 138 turns for the, the uh, type 61. So in terms of the, the same inductance value, Type 61 needs more turns. So that's, uh, that may be a consideration. But uh, general, general purpose HF range, uh, I pretty much use the 43s, although you can use the 61s. So I'm going to end this uh, video right now. Just know that uh, 
Uh, great care must be exercised in the building of a homebrew uh, package uh, double balance mixer. And uh, the next part of the video is going to show you exactly how to do that. Uh, again, this is Pete, N6QW.